start the presentation. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Well, <clears throat> hello everyone. I'm Matias Vara. I am here to talk about some of the work I did in the last couple of months regarding um, some work I did to improve the button time of, uh, of the Toro kernel, uh, which is a kernel dedicated to run on virtual machines. Um, can you hear me well? I mean, so in general, there are no speakers here. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. So what is exactly Toro is application oriented kernel, which is made of more or less uh, five mainly units, which are a uh, process memories, file system, networking, and this component, these units provide a simple API for the user application. For example, if you if you see the process unit, we'll see machine thread, three thread, all the manipulation of the thread. If you see a file system unit, we'll see some uh, API to manipulate files and so on. Um, in the case of the of microservice, which is a use, as you, must, you may know, it is a user application. Uh, we propose to compile the microservice together with the kernel, and this results in a single, bin a sing single binary. Um, the microservice can decide which are the components going to include uh, in this binary. So, f and that is done directly from the syntax. Uh, of the of the microservice. So, for example, in this case, I say, okay, I will include memory file system. I don't know the extension driver and the Intel Gigabit driver. Um, as the result of this, we generate a binary, which is a ELF. And from this binary, we have a set of tools in which we can first generate an image, and by relying on another tool called Clody, we can then launch a, v a virtual machine, right? Um, and to demonstrate that all this work, I will just show us a simple demonstration. Here, for example, we have a Toro running in a simple microservice, which is, which is a, a serving a index HTML. Um, for example, here you see the results. So what you see here is more or less the, well, the initialization of all the drivers. Um, sorry, we crossed here. This initialization of all the drivers and the networking and so on. And then from here, you see the user application start to execute. Um, if you come back to the, to the slide. So actually, we spent some time to first compile the kernel and the user and the microservice. And this takes more or less one second because it's only compilation and then generate the image. And we take another one second and a half, more or less, to boot the virtual machine. And here I'm, here I'm taking into account the time uh, the door is open. Um, I'm here, this time it shows that the kernel starts to execute, but not after that. It's just until this kernel mine starts to execute, for example. The image in the current state is around 4 megabytes. And so what we figure out, but I figure out it as this time limit a lot if we wanted to use kernel for, for example, continuous deployment of microservice, or if we wanted to fa um, instantiation on demand of microservice because we need a fast instantiation. So if we see more in detail what is, how is the booting process of Toro, you see first the virtual machine monitoring instantiation, which includes, for example, the instantiation of the device model, BIOS, and other stuff. I'm not pretty sure about this. Um, then you have the bootloader that is already part of the kernel, which is initialization most of the hardware, the processor, and to log mode, enable page in, well, read the kernel from the disk, and then put it on memory. Um, so this talk, I'm only going to talk about the word I did, which is what focuses on these two first steps. In the next slide, I'm going to talk about how we try to improve this time. Um, so yes, I will start talking about how I improve the bootloader. Then the virtual machine, the initialization of the virtual machine monitor. I will present some tests that I did, and then I will conclude. Um, well, the problem that I had at the beginning was that, the, as you can see, the generated image that include the user application and the kernel was so uh, very was very big. And this was like this because, in order to make the bootloader simpler, what we say is the image will be the copy uh, the the copy of the kernel in the memory. So the whole uh, the, I mean, an image of the, of the kernel in memory. Um, and we did it like this because it 
make simpler the bootloader because you just need to read the image, put it in memory, you don't need any data compression or something like this. Um, but the main problem of this is first, uh, you, you, you end up with a image that is huge, as you can see, was 4 megabytes. Um, the bootloader is still complex because you still need to initialize some hardware, uh, any paging, and so on. So the proposal what I'm working on was to use the minus kernel option, in the, which is proposed in Kibu Kami M, uh, to load the kernel. And I will explain a bit what is exactly this. Uh, actually, what you can tell Kimu is to uh, you can pass the uh, binary, which must be a multi-boot uh, kernel. And what is exactly going to do? Kimu is well. This is a this is not exactly low, like uh, how the the binary is, but I'm using this picture just to illustrate a bit. So actually, in the binary, which is must be ILS32, you have for sure all the section, and you need some sort of a special header that Kim is going to read. From this header, it's going to read all the section of the binary and then put it on memory. On, I mean, this is the memory of the virtual machine on the guest. Um, when, when Kim was start to execute multi the multi-boot mine, which is a point in the XTEX section, uh, the processor is already in protect mode. So most of the hardware is already initialized. So all that um, future that you need to implement the bootloader to initialize hardware you don't need it anymore because you already have there. And then at some point you will start to execute the, the kernel, right? So the benefits of using the, this option that have Kimu uh, was m were many. For example, we could reduce. I could reduce the size of the mesh from four megabyte to one hundred thirty kilobyte because only include the, the only include the I know the, the binary, right? Um, that reduces a lot of the complexity of the bootloader because you don't need to jump to protect more and some stuff. So because Kimo is already doing this for you, um, and also since you are not, you don't have to to read the whole image from this and put it on memory because Kim was doing this, you release a lot the boot in time. Uh, I started with one and a half and I, w I end up with half second to boot uh, the image, the, the, kern the kernel. The main drawback of this is that, well, not all virtual machine monitors support the use of this feature. Um, so you are, at the end, you are, you, you, are, and you are porting your kernel to that virtual machine monitor. Second, um, Kimu only, Kimu only support ELF32, so you need some sort of magic to put ELF64 inside, inside ELF32, which is extra work that you have to do. Um, still, when the kernel starts to execute, it still is in protect mode. If you want to use 64-bit, you have to go to log mode, and you, st you still have to do such initialization in the bootloader, so it is not that you can just start to execute the kernel. Um, some people were working on this more precisely in a project called Kimulite. Uh, we try to add, add these features uh, to Kimu, so you can uh, you don't need to uh, enable log mode because when you, you jump to the kernel, it's already log mode. So uh, reduce a lot of also the complexity of the bootloader. But they stopped to work on this, in, I think, one year ago. Uh, if you see the port that I did. For Toro, you can find it in that issue in GitHub. I stopped in that one year ago, I think. Um, so the next um, topic that I want to talk is how I work around the virtual machine monitor to try to improve the initialization. Um, so actually, what I did was um, I studied three, appro three approaches to try to improve the virtual machine monitor. These approaches are based on KVM Kimu. And these are Keyboot, Nemo, and Firecracker. Maybe you know already then. Um, the big picture of this approach is that they try to improve some aspect of the virtual machine monitor. Uh, for example, simplify the load of the kernel or some uh, reduce the device model. So uh, they, I think they, they tackle different aspects of the whole virtual machine monitor. Um, and to talk about the, these approaches, I wanted to first introduce some concepts here. When you have the, the kernel, the Linux kernel, the KVE driver, which, pro, which provide the all, um, 
all the um, virtualization features. Then you have the build, the build machine monitor, which provides, for example, device simulation, BIOS to the guests, and then you have for sure, the guests in guest mode. So the first approach I want to talk is Keyboot, which is also based on Keymoon. And the idea is that propose a, a firmware which is much more optimized. Um, the only drawback that they present, I mean, there are not a lot of information about how it's ex exactly is the optimization, but one of the drawbacks that present is, for example, the, the, um, the, they limit the size of the kernel that you can load, it is 8 megabytes, um, and you can find more information there, which is cool with this is that you can just boot it, I mean, you can just compile it and then use it by passing the, the minus BIOS with the, with the, um, with the firmware. The next approach that I tried was Nemo, which is um, which is a, which is based on Kimu, but they only focus in two platforms. Uh, and the idea of this project, at this idea that I, that they gave me was that they try to reduce all the the device model in order to reduce the tax surface uh, and also the, for example, the memory footprint of the virtual machine monitor. Uh, also, they propose a new virtual machine, a new type of machine, uh, which is named Beard, and to use this virtual machine you can only boot from USB. I did not not work too much on this, um, but you can find more there in that link I use it. Um, and the last approach that I tried was Firecracker, which is, I think they started to be public on December, I think. Um, the nice thing here is that they don't have any device simulation. All the all the hardware is based on Virtio. Um, what is also nice is that you don't have this multi-boot feature that has in Kimu, but you can, for example, give Firecracker an um, ELF64 binary, and it's going just to start the kernel, and in the processor is already in, with patient enabled and 64 long model, which is quite nice. Uh, so that reduces a lot of the hardware initialization that you had to do before you execute the kernel. Um, so, how I compare these approaches? Well, the test was quite simple. What I made sure was the time from I launched the VN until the VN is shut down. And to shoot down the VN, I just added some code in the kernel main. You can, and then I did this for each for the three approaches, and then compare the time. And um, if you want to see more about the script that I use, you can see here. Uh, for sure, you can give me some comment about the script because it's it's, it's just yeah, it's sort of a sketch. Um, so that is a, the tr the test. The rest of that I have. Um, this is the hardware that I use it. And the one interesting thing, but there are many interesting things that you can see here, for example. Here you have Kimu, where I use the 4 megabyte image, and then you can see the difference when you start to just use the binary. I mean, that is rational because you, I mean, you, you're reducing a lot the, the, the binary you had to load on memory. And then you can see that you have a 300 millisecond that you, that you get if you use Keyboot. Um, then you have Nemo, where you see a difference of 152 milliseconds for Kimu. I don't know why, but and then you have a lot of difference when you use Kimu. And this is really interesting what you get by using Firecracker, when, because it only takes uh, 27 milliseconds to, to start to, to execute the kernel mine. Um, and I sh it's just a I noted that I live here just to compare as how in mind the, the times. Uh, for example, if you follow this blog and you check how much time is spent in an echo, it's more or less two and a half milliseconds. So, and here you have a whole virtual machine, sort of virtual, micro virtual machine, how they call it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to conclude. So what I get is um, when we use a solution that is a combination between a multi-boot kernel and keyboot, which is a firmware which is optimized, you see an improvement of my current bootloader of uh, uh, 11, yeah, a factor of 11. 
I agree that my my old wood loader was a bit crap, but still. Um, then we we have a factor of eight, 85 percent, 84, when we try with firecracker. Uh, um, my impression is that um, the I mean the, cho the the choice of one solution over another is just a, a trade-off between the need that we have to do to adapt the kernel to that solution and the resulting booting time that uh, we want to what we, we want to expect. Um, so yeah, that's me. I don't know if someone has any questions. Maybe it was too fast. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever tried KVM tool? Sorry? KVM tool? No. Did I, I, I didn't try it. Ah, sorry. Uh, if I had tried a uh, KVM tool, uh, no, I haven't. They told me to do it a couple of days ago, but I had no time. But I will do it next time. Uh, uh, implementation of what? Ah, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Uh, the the question was if the implementation was in Assembler and Pascal. Yeah. The implementation of what? Well, you have yeah, a part of Assembler, a part of Pascal. Yeah. I mean, all the work that I present here is most on the bootloader, so it's most Assembler. So. So if you have no questions, uh, that's all. <laughs>